Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to, actually I want to first explain uh, the background noise. If you hear um, some screeching sound or squeaking sound, it's actually my uh, tea kettle that's, uh, that's going right now. So I apologize for that. And I apologize for, again, having to hold my phone with my hand. I still don't have a tripod, although I'm right on the verge <laughs> of getting something from uh, either Amazon or buying it at Walmart um, or Target or something. So I promise eventually I will uh, not have to resort to this. But um, as you can see, the book that I wanted to talk about today is American Dirt. And this video, I kind of was... Um, hesitant to make it but again we're in the middle of a of a um, pandemic and we're homebound for for a good portion of our time so i figured i might as well tackle this um this book and um yeah american dirt it's a it, you probably have already heard um you probably have already read it because it's just it was one of those really highly anticipated books and then once it came out there was that huge controversy with the Latinx um, community talking about how um, books by by um, white writers about the border um, are given precedence over um, books by Latinx uh, writers. And I um, want to weigh in a little bit about that controversy and my thoughts about it. Um, the first thing I want to say about American Dirt, and again, you've probably already know all this, but it's about um, it's about the border crisis in the sense that it, or at least that that forms uh, sort of the backdrop for the story, which is not a very complex story. It's basically the story of um, a mother and a son, her eight-year-old son. Uh, they're from Mexico City, and they're on the run from the cartel, uh, from cartel violence, and they're trying to get to um, the United States. And so the book is basically a thriller. Structurally, it's a thriller, um, but it does have the background of being about the immigrant experience, the migrant experience uh, from Mexico. Um, so it's in that sense, it's a sort of rip from the headlines type of thriller story. Um, and it's not very good. <laughs> um, I was hoping to find some sort of redeeming aspect to this book because I um, admittedly, even though I'm Latinx and I do agree with um, the backlash to 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 an extent, I do agree with a lot of what was being said in the backlash to this uh, the, to the publication and the marketing of this book. Um, but I did feel somewhat bad for Janine Cummins, who is the writer. She's a white woman. Uh, again, if you don't know this, you can easily Google it. But Janine Cummins is a, is a white writer who um, wrote about this story from the first person point of view. Or excuse me, not, uh, not first person. Um, it's written from the perspective of the, the, the woman that's, that's on the run, um, the woman and her son. So it's their perspective, and it's a perspective that presumably she as a white woman doesn't know too much about personally. And so there were all sorts of questions about whether she had the right to tell this story. Um, and there were also criticisms that were levied at the publishing industry itself, which seems to favor white voices over um, Latinx voices. Or not seems to, it definitely does, because the statistic that came out was upwards of 90% of the um, voices that are published uh, in the in the big publishing community or big publishing world um, and the the big five are white voices and that's certainly problematic but um, and of course they get the accolades they get all the the attention the acclaim despite the fact that Latinx writers have been writing about these issues for I mean, they've been writing about them for a long time, and yet they have not been afforded even a fraction of the um, attention or the prestige that a Janine Cummins has um, has uh, received. She was um, Oprah's book club, as you can see, it's a, an Oprah's book club pick. She was afforded a seven-figure uh, advance. 
Um, she got all kinds of praise from writers like Don Winslow. You can see the back of the book has nothing but um, praise for her. Stephen King wrote uh, some glowing review. Uh, Julia Alvarez, John Grisham, uh, Don Winslow, Sandra Cisneros. Um, so that that's a, that's a bit puzzling, but um, she presumably liked the book very much so because she calls it not only the simply simply the great American novel, not simply the great American novel. It's the great novel of Las Americas, Las Americas. It's the great world novel. This is the international story of our times. Wow. <laughs> uh, so I actually had you know I. When I, before reading the book, I was aware of the controversy and I wanted very much to believe that, see, I'm coming from the mindset of art is free and art should be free. We should be, free, we should feel free as artists and we should encourage our artists to tackle anything they want to, um, certainly not without repercussions. And that's why I agree with the backlash. Um, I, I support, I do think Janine Cummings has a right to tell whatever story she wants to tell. But by the same token, readers and audiences have a right to respond um, in whatever way they, they feel. So um, I, I was hoping to find some, oh, there goes my tea. So you'll have to come with me. I don't. <laughs> Let's see, let me take out my tea kettle. So sorry about this. You can see the steam coming up from the tea. Okay. Okay, so back to it. Um, you can, you can, where was I? I was talking about, oh yeah, so art being free. I, that's where I'm coming from. I, I believe art should be free. But um, I also believe that people have a right to respond in whatever way they feel is appropriate. And people did respond. <laughs> oh boy, did they respond. Um, the response was sparked by a review by a, a woman named Miriam Gerba, who is also a writer. She's a Latinx writer. She wrote a memoir called Mean, um, which I haven't read, but I do want to read it. And, um, there were there were other key figures in that movement, but I believe it was sparked by Miriam Gerba's um, scathing review um, in on the blog. I believe it was Topics of Meta um, is the name of the blog. You can look it up if you look up Miriam Gerba, American Dirt. I'm sure you'll find it. And Miriam is M Y R I A M Gerba G U R B A. So um, that was the spark of it, and it just it. It took off and so I wanted I was aware of the controversy I was also aware of the the prestige that this book was affording to be honest Stephen King kind of sold me on it I'm a big Stephen King fan personally and uh, you know when he puts his name on a book it really speaks to me and I'm sure lots of other people so I was really excited to read it to the degree that I I knew it was problematic and I acknowledged it but I also was hoping to find some redeeming aspect to the story um that but okay so now getting to the story i'm not sure why this book is so lauded and so praised because i found it to be quite trivial of a story um at least in the sense of the 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 handling of it i found the handling of it to be quite trivial and cheesy and not very well written to be perfectly honest and that makes me sad because i i have heard janine cummings talk about her her process um and and the journey of writing this book and it did sound like a very personal project for her something that i'm sure she wrestled with on a personal level she writes about it in the in the afterword by the author she talks about how she had such doubts about writing the book and she talks about the personal um connection she has to to the material um, through uh, her dad. Um, her father passed away um, before this book was published and before it was written, actually. 
and the the trauma of um, loss and the grief, that was something that she felt was very um, impactful in the writing of this book. And I believe her. I mean, I do get a sense that she has a a genuine curiosity about grief. In the in the opening pages of this book, there's a quinceanera party. Of course, a quinceanera, Mexico, right? <laughs> it's got to be a quinceanera. So there's a quinceanera party, and the cartels bust in, and they um, the the cartel busts in, and they they kill pretty much everyone at the party. That's not a spoiler, um, but it does inform the rest of the book. That's how the book starts. Um, the survivors, the wo the woman, um, the main character Lydia, and her son, uh, eight year old son uh survive and then they go on the run and so i you know miriam gerba used a really interesting term that i think has some has some real teeth to it and it's called she said it's uh trauma porn and i think that's such such an interesting uh term or phrase because there is a sense that there's there's almost a fetishistic quality to the the horrors that are presented in this book. I mean, the the killing of the family is is really the least of it. I mean, we encounter all sorts of um, really horrific trauma, um, and it, it reminds me a lot of like these horror movies that are um, torture porn. You know, it, it's there and. Uh, it's something that we're like, ooh, you know, like that's that's really hard to look at, but it's also the whole reason it's there is because it's also titillating. It's also it's the reason we're there. That's the thrilling aspect of it. We're we're kind of um, beguiled by just how horrific these these happenings are, and that makes me feel very uneasy reading this book because um, it's not very respectful of. The, on a on a on a philosophical level, I don't feel that that's very respectful of the um, of the migrant experience. It's exploitative of that experience, and it it um, it sort of cheapens it and and reduces it to the level of um, it's there so that you can be entertained by it. It's violence for the sake of um, entertainment, enjoyment, and I feel like that has um, that there's there's something there that Miriam Gerba heard on uh, uh, hit on, and that to me is the most damning aspect of the book. Not to mention, it's just not very well written. There's a lot of cliched stuff. That it's it's kind of cheesy the way it's written. Um, I don't see how people took this seriously. Don Winslow said it's the uh, grapes of wrath for our time. And I'm like, wow, I mean, that's some high praise. But, you know, this book is the grapes of wrath of our times. I, I mean, it, it's bewildering because this book is so, like, poorly written. And I can only imagine that these writers who are, are well-respected, I mean, they, these are these are great writers, Sandra Cisneros, Stephen King, John Gr I mean, these are writers that are worth their, um, you know, worth their salt, and yet they fell for this material that's just pulpy and cheap and, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's not a prestigious, it's not a literary work, it's, it's a cheap thriller with the marketing of being literary and, and high-minded, but it's not. Um, I think what really did this book in was the marketing of it. Um, but back back to what I was saying about these writers that praised it. I'm trying to find in my mind. I'm trying to find an explanation for how they how could Stephen King like this? I think what what I really think is that these writers, excluding Sandra Cisneros, although maybe I can't for the life of me figure out which Sandra Cisneros saw in this book. Um, and I can't, I don't want to speak for her, but excluding Sandra Cisneros and Julia Alvarez and um, Salma Hayek jumped on board. And I, I think also that the, I forgot her name. Uh, she's the actress from that movie, uh, uh, Roma, um, that was on Netflix, uh, the, the Mexican movie, uh, black and white. Um, I forgot her name. 
it starts with a Y. Anyway, um, that she also praised this book. Um, I can, I just imagine, maybe she's going for the role in the movie when they, I'm sure the movie rights are still up for this book. Or actually, I think it's sold. Uh, the movie rights for that book sold right away. So maybe she was trying to like angle in on, on, on the role of Lydia or something. I don't know. But excluding those people, the, the other writers, Stephen King, Don, I think maybe what happened was that they were, um, they don't maybe know many Mexican people. They don't, they're not familiar with the, the, the migrant experience or the border. They're, they're only superficially what they see in the news and, you know, their, their intentions are good. They're like the, 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 um, progressive liberals who, who, um, maybe are only only superficially aware of these issues and so along comes this book that tackles them in the most superficial way and because they only know these issues superficially it speaks to them and it makes them feel like they're reading something that's more profound than it actually is oprah for example you know oprah's i i consider her a very intelligent she is a very intelligent um good i believe she's a good person she's a businesswoman but she's she's also a person and i believe her her heart is um her heart is good. I can't see inside her her motivations or her mind, but I I have a sense that she is a good person. I don't think she's like a a Trump or anything like that, or uh, you know, someone someone of that nature. But um, she fell for this too, and I can again, I can only imagine it's because these people don't have the sort of intimate knowledge or experience or deep understanding of these issues so when presented with something that presents these issues in a superficial way because they only know these issues on a superficial level it speaks to them and makes them think that they're reading something more profound than than it really is so that's my interpretation of why these people fell for this book um oh man janine cummins um she was in over her head, and I feel bad for her still to a degree, um, though I know even that probably might be a uh, um, controversial statement because really the people that deserve to be feel bad really the people that deserve that sympathy are the writers, the, the artists, the Latinx writers and, and the, the Latinx community and the people, uh, uh, people of color, the voices of those people who have been ignored and who continue to be ignored by the pub publishing industry. Um, those people deserve, you know, um, a great deal of, of that, that attention. But speaking specifically about Janine Cummins, um, I think that if this book had been marketed differently, perhaps not as a, a prestige novel, perhaps not as some sort of like, um, you know, definitive literary work on the Mexican migrant experience, um, like it was, if it was just some cheap paperback thriller that came out, you know, I'm sure it would have its audience as a thriller and it probably wouldn't have received, it, it still would be problematic, don't get me wrong, that would be problematic as an exploitative uh, piece, but I think that without that sort of like prestige and that high regard and that those the accolades and the 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 anticipation for the release of this book if all that was removed and this was marketed in a different way i think that it might have been a little easier to digest within the culture not that it wouldn't be problematic but i don't think the backlash would have been quite so intense um as it was, but you know, to a degree, I think that we should be uh, grateful to this book, to a, in a sense, because it brought out that controversy and it brought forward that conversation. Without this book, that might have been delayed and it might not have happened with as much force and with as much gusto as uh, as it was uh, as it transpired. Um, so. You know, to the degree that this book inspired the conversation, um, or, or at least uh, sparked it within the mainstream um, uh, sort of uh, attention, you know, 
to that degree, I think that this book is is worthwhile. And it, it's the reason it's worth talking about. Um, this book probably will go down in history as the impetus for change. I hope it does because, um, you know, we've delayed these conversations for a long time. Um, these conversations about, uh, you know, voices of people in color in, in the big publishing world. And so now that's something that the publishers can't ignore, thanks to Miriam Gerba and the movement of, uh, I believe it's Literaria Dignidad. My Spanish is bad, but it, basically literary dignity. Um, and that, that's the movement, that's the hashtag. Uh, again, look up Miriam Gerba and you can find out more about that. But that movement was a direct result of this book. Not that that movement owes anything to this book, but um, for better or worse, here it is. And for better, hopefully better, that's the result of the publication of this book. So yeah, it, it's not a very good book. It's interesting to to look at as an artifact, as a um, as a milestone, perhaps uh, a publishing milestone in the history of um, of uh, you know this topic of representation of voices and 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 things of that nature but in and of itself i did, i wasn't very impressed i thought it was cheesy i thought it was quite trite um i thought it was very superficial um and exploitative uh i mean there's this there, there's like interspersed throughout the novel are these spanish words that are just I don't know, the, the, presumably everyone in the book is speaking Spanish, but the book is written in English. There is a Spanish translation available that I've seen, but um, the, this book was written in English and the characters are all presumably speaking Spanish because they're in Mexico. Um, but yet, for some reason, this book feels it necessary to intersperse like words in Spanish occasionally, like here and there. Like we went to the tienda and mommy and I went to the store and we bought ourselves a, a, a pan dulce. And then we were on our way to El Norte to get to freedom. And, you know, it, it's just, a, why the Spanish? That's my question. Why, why, I mean, we know that these characters are speaking Spanish. So that just tells me that this book was written for white audiences <laughs> that, uh, cause you wouldn't need to tell me that, you know, you wouldn't need to clarify and you don't need to, to, um, as a, as a, as a, Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm stumbling over my words, but um, you're getting to a point where it, it reminds me of Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison once gave a, an interview to, I believe, Charlie Rose, and she was talking about how uh, early, Latin, early um, uh, African-American writers like um, Ralph Ellison, like she gave the example of Ralph Ellison and the Invisible Man and she was like saying, invisible to whom? You know, she was reading these books and she felt that these books were not written for her because they were explaining things that a as an African-American woman, she did not have to have that explained to her. Um, so it led her to question and she said you could sense the white gaze in those books, in those works. You could sense that they were ri being written for white people. And I feel the same might be said of this book. Um, this book doesn't feel like it was written with a, with a Mexican-American or a Mexican in mind as the reader, because if it was, you wouldn't one, it, <laughs> you wouldn't write like that to, to, to me. It didn't speak to me. Um, it felt like she was talking to a white person that didn't know any better. And I feel like that's the primary audience for this. Um, but that's just my opinion, um, I'm sure. And I also want to acknowledge that a lot of people um, have talked about how affected they were by these by this book that this book opened their minds and their hearts to the migrant experience um i can't i i don't know about that i mean i i think that there's far better work out there i hope that this book inspires people to go out there and seek um other writers who are who have tackled the subject matter in in more of a substantial way um writers like Urea, 
uh, there, there's so many. You can look them up. Uh, Miriam Gerba. I mean, you can you can look them up. I'm sure there there are plenty of lists now that this book has been written. So, um, anyway, I could go on and on about this book, but that's the gist of what I wanted to talk about with American Dirt. Um, I don't know if it's worth the read, but it's worth knowing about it just in the sense that it has sparked. Uh, a literary uh, revolution and, a, and hopefully a revolution within the publishing industry. Um, what else should I talk about? God, there, there's another aspect to this book that I wanted to mention, and I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. Mention it. Um, and that is there were allegations of plagiarism against this book. Uh, Urea had talked about how there were well, actually, he did, and I think other people kind of brought it to his attention. Um, and I heard a podcast with him talking about how his wife actually brought it to his attention. Uh, she she was reading the book, and she noticed that there was uh, there were passages that seemed like directly lifted from his books. Um, and that's something to think about too. That that's something that I really had to acknowledge because there there for example there's a there's a sequence where a boy is run over by a um by a trash uh a trash collecting truck. Um yeah, he's he's crushed under the wheels and, and that specific sequence was was um allegedly lifted or plagiarized from uh, one of Urea's works. So um I felt like that's important to acknowledge here too. Um I'm not going to speak to cuz I actually haven't read that book, but um I have read about those allegations and so I I do want to mention that you can look up more if you're familiar with Urea's work. You can judge for yourself whether that's the case, but I, I do want to mention that as well. Uh so anyway, I will stop here because this video has gone on far longer than and I anticipated. Um, yeah, if you have any uh, thoughts or if, you, if you've read American Dirt or have any questions about what I've said, again, this is all just my, my opinion on the book. Um, I'm sure other people have, have differing opinions. Um, but feel free, to, feel free to talk in the comments below and let me know what you, what you think, um, if you've read it. And yeah, that's about it. Um, have a have a happy reading and stay safe. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.